Ciao ragazzi, Zach Cords here with RevZilla and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Today's guest, MB Agusta's Turismo Veloce Luso. So loosely translated and out of order, that is fast luxury touring. So for $20,000, you get 110 horsepower, an upright riding position, and loads of features to keep you comfortable. But if you're anything like me, as complex and sophisticated a machine as this is, you're probably just wondering, what's it like to ride to work? <sighs> I got good news for you. Here we go. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're just about ready to go here, dive into this MV Agusta. But before we do, a quick but exciting announcement. This episode of Daily Rider is brought to you by Quadlock. Quadlock makes mounts, cases, and chargers for your mobile device that fit all of the vehicles we cover here on Daily Rider and many more. Plus, they support Daily Rider, which means every product of Quadlocks that you buy at RevZilla.com, I will do one extra wheelie to celebrate. <laughs> if you don't believe that, uh, geez, you just don't know me very well. Anyway, thanks to Quadlock for keeping gas in our tanks here. And if you would like me to do extra wheelies, click the link in the description of this video to learn more about Quadlock. All right, that's just it. We gotta dive into this MV Agusta now. There is a lot to unpack, plenty to talk about. I guess we'll start with the engine. That seems like the place to start in general. It is a 798cc inline triple, and we'll talk about how it performs more later. You can see a, a steel tube trellis frame, it's basic architecture, a single-sided swing arm um, with uh, this pretty badass three pipes, sort of trident of pipes coming out the back there that MV Agusta has leaned into. Um, remote preload adjustment for the shock, here. That's uh, a nice touch. Um, what else? Um, Brembo binders, uh, steel braided lines, sort of uh, luxury stuff, as the Lusso would uh, would suggest. Um, yeah, center stand comes on the Lusso, heated grips. Um, kind of a neat feature that we won't see much while riding. The blinkers are integrated into the, um, the uh, sort of, you know, quasi-adventure um, handguard things, um, which means the, the body works pretty clean here. So these are sort of uh, touches you expect to see on uh, an MV Agusta, and uh, it delivers. One other thing I wanted to mention, uh, the saddlebags are not standard, actually. It's about 1500 bucks for these saddlebags. Um, but while we're here, I guess I'll just show you what they look like on the inside, how you get into them. Little double latch system. Uh, I've got my uh, toolkit flat kit, which I take on my sort of longer trips when I was testing the bike. Um, worked pretty well. It does fit a full face helmet. Uh, it fit my medium full face helmets anyway. I tried a few of them. So that's a nice feature. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the luggage later. But again, uh, the $20,000 price that's listed in the description of this video and that I'll mention is just for the bike. Doesn't include the saddlebags, which are an extra 15 hundo. I feel like we're ready. Let's fire it up, shall we? A uh, little five and a half inch TFT. I say little. Um, it's sort of little in the in the modern motorcycling world, but um, it's uh, not, not so bad. Um, and the engine is, uh, yeah, it's got some spice, <laughs> which we will experiment with as we ride, of course. Um, but I think uh, I think that's it. Yeah. I don't know, can we see the? Uh, Daytime running lights, sort of LEDs that go around the, the headlight, which is kind of cool. We'll talk a bit more about the DRL later as well, if I remember. There's lots to remember. Whew. It is a smoking hot day in Los Angeles. If there's a little bit of extra wind noise around the mic today, it could be because I got all my helmet vents open to try and keep my dome cool. There's an oven. You see the bike says it's 97 degrees right now, which I think is a bit of an exaggeration when it's sitting in the sun. But still, it is warm. Whew. At any rate, let's dive into some specs, shall we? Uh, that 798cc inline triple cranks out a claimed 110 horsepower at the crankshaft and 62 foot-pounds of torque. The bike uh, weighed in on the Daily Rider scales at uh, 508 pounds, which is uh, not super light. Um, but 
a uh, quick note for the MV Gusta fans out there. Um, it does hold 5.7 gallons of gas, which um, is not nothing. And yeah, the seat height is 32.7 inches, which um, is not particularly notable really, except that uh, I did want to bring up the fact that we talked about uh, the last bike we rode on Daily Rider, if you're keeping up with every <laughs> episode, was the Zero FXE, which is a little all electric sort of urban uh, supermoto thing. And uh, that bike had a 32.9 inch seat height. And I said that it felt lower than that, which is true. Now this bike has a 32.7 inch seat height. And I'd say it feels a little, maybe a little taller than that. Um, but at any rate, um, it's sort of a, an average size for a bike of this category. And uh, in general, the, the specs, are, um, specs are sort of what you'd expect, I think. Maybe except for the weight. The weight's a little high, right? Almost 510 pounds. It's only like 20 pounds lighter than a S1000RR from BMW. I'm sorry, S1000XR is what I meant to say. Yeah, whatever, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Stay focused, Zach. As for the riding position, the whole bike is just pretty compact. The handlebar isn't maybe quite as ridiculously wide as you might expect from from a bike in this category. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a little narrow um, and the windshield is narrow and I feel like the seat is close to the handlebar and I feel like the foot pegs are not too high, but you know, sporty high. Uh, everything is just sort of um, clenched and, and tidy uh, in the packaging, which uh, I appreciate for, for the benefits that it has both aesthetic and uh, and you know making the bike more approachable from a size perspective, but yeah, it's a uh, it's something to note and uh, it makes it feel distinct, which I think is arguably a good thing. All right, out onto what classifies as an open road here in Los Angeles. <laughs> Not exactly flying down the freeway this morning, uh, but anyway, good time to talk about long range comfort and uh, sort of touring capability of course it's nice comfortable place to sit the ride position aside from being compact as i mentioned is uh pretty nice the seat's pretty good the only thing i don't like about the seat is that it pitches forward a bit and so it's nice and cushy at the back of the seat but i feel like i can't sit at the back of the seat because i just get kind of pushed forward uh, and i did wear one pair of uh riding pants that are kind of slippery and then i found myself just sort of slipping down into the into the notch of the of the seat and I wish it was a little bit flatter, but that's kind of a personal preference thing. Anyway, just something I noticed. The other feature that this bike has that's predictable, but still worth talking about is the adjustable windscreen, which slides up like that. Uh, that might be blocking the camera view a little bit. And if so, I apologize, but it's a little bit quieter for me. And my, whoa, hey, the Lexus going very fast. Um, it's uh, definitely a little bit more comfortable for me at six foot two to have this up. Uh, and if uh, this were my machine, I would probably experiment with even larger windscreens just to get some more of the buffeting away from my helmet. While we are on the topic of wind protection though, uh, one thing I really like about the compact riding position is that I feel very close to the windshield. And I think that that helps with uh, the air coming off this, that it doesn't have time to sort of tumble and become turbulent it's a little bit cleaner air that comes off this windscreen because it's so close to my face shield and my forehead where it ends up hitting. Um, but I think in general, uh, I like that aspect of the bike and I think that helps. Uh, but the truth is the screen's not quite the right height for my height. <laughs> so it's something that I'd probably play with if it were me. Quite an expansive view of the Port of Los Angeles today. Look at that. Wow. One other thing about the uh, Turismo Veloce, like the speedometer, it says I'm going in the 70s and I'm getting blitzed by a Toyota Tundra and I uh, that's exiting. I just don't, I, I, the speedometer seems like it's 12 or 15% optimistic, which eight to 10% is pretty common for motorcycles, but this one seems like it's uh, even more, um, reads even higher than, than usual, which is a little strange. The Turismo Veloce does have cruise control. You hold down this button here um, and a little light will come on. And uh, then with this toggle switch, you can toggle up the speed or down for the speed. So I'll set it down and then you tap it to, and then you set it and forget it. It's a little strange to use. If you've used other systems, it's not quite as um, intuitive, 
as some other systems, but it works. It's good and it's a nice feature to have. One system that this bike has that I find very curious is a speed limiter. So if you hold down this button, it will engage a speed limiter. And so now it's set to 60 miles an hour. So I'm gonna set it at 60 and then I'm gonna come up to the stoplight. Oop, we're gonna split lanes to the front here. And so now I'm gonna accelerate and I'm gonna hold it wide open. And in fourth gear, fifth gear, and you can see uh, it only lets me go, well, now we're going to 62, so you know, it maybe didn't quite work, but yeah, now it's slowing down to 60 and it won't let me go any faster than that. I mean, I guess if you're in a town or if you're on a 55 mile an hour road and you're like, man, I really just don't want to go any faster than 60 or 65 because I feel like I'll get a ticket or something, um, then you can set that and then you won't go any faster than that. I don't know if I've ever seen that before, aside from like a pit lane limiter on a super bike or something like that, you know, I don't know. All right, last little bit of the freeway portion of our ride here. And we always talk about mirrors. And the mirrors on this bike are pretty good, pretty smooth, uh, considering that there's a, a definitely a, a pretty uh, significant pulse from the engine um, and a little bit of vibration in kind of a mechanical, visceral way that I, that I don't uh, dislike altogether. Um, but you think that the mirrors would be shakier than they are, but they're not actually pretty smooth. The big problem with the mirrors is that they don't stick out far enough. So when I sit like this with my arms in the normal riding position, um, I just see the inside of my elbow. So the mirrors need to be out here and then they would be better. And maybe the bike wouldn't look as cool. And that's why MV Augusta did that. But um, you know me, I'm all about practicality in mirrors, you know? All right, neighborhood test here. We'll do some footless stops if possible. Um, and we'll put this weight to the test, right? It's compact, but it's heavy, this bike. So let's see how it does. All right, here we go. Yep, okay. <laughs> Success, I think. And you might've heard that kind of like extra tall rev when I took off. It sounded like I didn't know what I was doing. Like, rah, rah. That's something that I find in the fueling to be a little strange on this bike. Uh, it, it actually, it behaves really, really nicely at low speed. Like if you're going really slow and you're just kind of slipping the clutch in first gear and giving a little bit of gas, it it works really nicely. The, the engine doesn't mind turning slowly. It's got good torque. I just feel like the first part of the electronic throttle is like a little, it, like, yeah, the first five or 10% of your throttle turn are a lot more than I want. Um, even when you turn down all the many, many settings that I'll try to remember to dive into later. Ah, I screwed that one up. Mm. Quick shifter got a little, got a little uh, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it. Got a little bobble from the quick shifter approaching that stop sign. Um, but that's rare. In general, the quick shifter up and down is pretty good, I think, especially when you're sort of hard on the gas or hard on the brakes. It seems to have a performance bent to it, which makes sense since Envy Gusta, I think, fancies themselves a performance brand. So they sort of tuned it that way, which I think is understandable. Yeah, this kind of stuff, I mean, the, the bike's surprisingly good, I think. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I just, I like leaned a little too hard on the, uh, <laughs> lugging the engine. <laughs> Crap. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Someone must have bought something on Revzilla.com. I just did a big willy. It's a spicy power plant for sure. It's got a it's got a growl and a snarl um, that is uh, not typically present in mid-size tall rounder bikes like these, in my opinion. Alright, as we approach the final stop sign here. Oh, that was a nice clean, nice clean foot to stop. I think in general, to as a synopsis of the um, round town manners of this bike, it's good, not great. Um, the the engine is surprisingly docile um, for what it is, but there's there are some quirks to the fueling, um, and it doesn't have quite enough steering lock. And uh, if you do get off balance with it a little bit, it is 500 pound bike 
which is not nothing. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, something, something to keep in mind, I suppose, if, uh, if you're gonna ride around a city a lot. <laughs> the engine is really fun, though. All right, Lover's Lane, where we talk about passenger accommodations. The passenger report on this bike is positive in general. The one thing I said I kind of always slip, oh, my blinker's on. We'll talk about that in a minute, don't let me forget. Uh, I said I slipped to the forward part of the seat on occasion, and that means that the rider can sit kind of far from the passenger, and depending on the passenger's security or insecurity, <laughs> uh, they won't like that very much. In general though, the passenger seat's fairly plush. The other note is that with the saddlebags on, the passenger can't put the balls of their feet on, or my passenger couldn't anyway, on the foot pegs because the saddlebag's in the way. That's a fairly common uh, thing to note about uh, bikes like this, but, um, but there you have it, passenger report. So the dash light thing. So I don't know how the camera's picking it up, but right now the sun is shining on the dash because the sun's behind me, and I can see the dash just fine. I can see where gear I'm in, RPM, speed, temperature, all that stuff, it's fine. It's totally fine. The black edge of the screen where the auxiliary lights are like uh, blinkers and that kind of thing. If I turn on my right blinker right now, it is just horrendously dim that the, the blinker light, it's so easy to miss. I mean, I don't, I had to like learn where to look for it in order to see what was going on. Uh, and I think that's an odd mistake to make and it might you might not care about it it's not really that big a deal but i figured i'd point it out all right we're into the twisty road section and i should have started talking about this sooner because there's a lot to talk about as far as handling goes so this bike does have electronically adjustable damping in the fork and shock and i found the best way to adjust that you can adjust it in the menus which hopefully we have a chance to look at but if i toggle over on this screen here i can i don't know if you can see that but it says that there's uh you know, it's set to one person on the bike. So I can set that to a rider with luggage, uh, two people or two people with luggage. And uh, so I'm gonna set it to two people with luggage right now, which stiffens the damping up quite a bit to try to compensate for luggage and a passenger that I don't have. The point is, this is the way to make the bike uh, kind of rigid and stiff, in my opinion. In the menus, like I said, you can adjust the suspension setting from soft to medium to hard, I believe. And I didn't really find that that did very much, to be perfectly honest with you. But this adjustment does make a pretty big difference. It's really notable how much stiffer the bike gets. And uh, as a result, it's uh, you know a little more agile and responsive, arguably, which I appreciate that you can feel that. It's kind of an odd way to do it, but this aspect of the menu is accessible while riding where the other one is not. So this is what I ended up using. And to be honest with you, most of the time I left it just in the sort of softest setting uh, because even slinging it through twisty roads on the canyon riding that I did and on the freeway I just like the the comfort mode the best is in general it's a it's a pretty sprightly and agile motorcycle it's not just the electronics either there's you know as I've said a number of times at this point it is kind of compact even for a 500 pound bike and then you know it's got a counter rotating crank which I think helps it feel light uh, as the engine's spinning MV Agusta pretty clearly put some effort into making the bike feel sporty. And I think that effort has paid off because it does. I didn't talk about this on the freeway as I often do, but I think the gearing on this bike is pretty much spot on for the engine dynamic. Just throwing that out there. I think first gear works nicely around town. It's got nice punch and you know, it'll pull a little power wheelie uh, without going a zillion miles an hour. And then when you're on the freeway in sixth gear, cruising along, uh, the vibes aren't too bad. Uh, I might gear it up a little bit, but I don't know. I'm so finicky that way. All right, I think we might be at this traffic light for a hot minute here, so we can dive into the, the dash a little bit. Um, in this main screen, if you hold down this button here, you will get to uh, this menu system here, where you can uh, you know adjust the settings and uh, the clock and all that mumbo jumbo. And this is where you can adjust some of the engine controls, stuff like that. So you say I have max torque in full power, but I have engine response in slow response, gas sensitivity in low, and then max torque in low, and I have engine brake in low. I'm gonna turn that up to normal, just because we're here, why not? Anyway, there's a lot to adjust. I don't know why you can adjust max torque engine, engine response, and gas sensitivity. Not to mention maps. 
it seems like uh, too much to me if I'm being honest uh, but anyway this is what the the menu looks like and uh, it's fairly intuitive I think uh, yeah trip meters uh, the IMU data they can show here you know lean angle and um, and braking force and acceleration force which is kind of cute and then the um, uh, traction control and uh, the suspension settings as we talked about before in general I think it's a pretty good dash like I said it, it um, unfortunately is smaller than the other dashes on other bikes um, but in general I appreciate that that um, MV Gusta laid it out pretty well so kudos to that holy Moses I'm warm and to be clear uh, the bike's not barfing too much heat on me I do feel a little bit on um, my my knees and my right foot uh, but as soon as I'm going heck 25 30 miles an hour I, I haven't really noticed it that much and this is a temperature honestly where almost any liquid cooled bike <laughs> is gonna is gonna put a little bit of heat on you I mean especially any bike that makes 100 horsepower is probably gonna put a little bit of heat on you in uh, in weather like this but uh, in general I haven't noticed the, the heat to be too bad and uh, I think MV Gusta probably deserves a little bit of credit for that considering uh, they tried to keep everything slim and um, and tidy down there well, one thing I realized I would be remiss not to point out would be um, the other models of MV Gusta Turismo Veloce. Uh, there's the RC, which is uh, racing something or other. It's very expensive. Um, and there's SES, which denotes the smart clutch system, uh, whereby uh, MV Gusta partnered with Recluse, American clutch company, uh, that makes nifty clutches for dirt bikes that allow you to... Um, it allows the bike to keep running even when it stopped it sort of slips at low speed um, if you don't know about a recluse clutch I'll let you look that up later the point is MV Gusta partnered with them to create a system where uh, you don't have to pull in the clutch you can come to a stop in first gear and just accelerate away twist and go kind of like a scooter or a Honda DCT system or something like that but a lot lighter and uh, yeah that's a feature that's available on this bike as well as maybe one other one in MV Gusta's lineup anyway I think that's interesting. And we're on to our dirt road shortcut on our Italian touring bike. <laughs> I actually have not, uh, whoops, nope, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do, I want to go to traction control and I want to go down to zero. <laughs> actually, you know what? I haven't, let's try one. Let's try TC1. Let's see if we can get any craziness going on here. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of slide. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's actually pretty rowdy. I'm surprised, but you can adjust it on the fly as well. So you can see we're in zero now. Woo yep, okay, well maybe TC1 is where I belong. <laughs> All right, time for a jump. <laughs> uh, yeah, the electronic suspension actually did a pretty good job with that. Didn't even come close to bottoming out. I think in some ways it's a little too conservative actually, the electronic suspension. Um, like it has six inches of travel, I think, but it never quite feels like it, if I'm honest, uh, which is a little disappointing. Oh, we got a construction zone, so we gotta, we gotta be careful with the wheel. I can't do really do a wheelie, but the answer is yes, it does rip in wheelies. Sorry that I can't really get into it here, but I'm not gonna mess around with doing big wheelies in a construction zone. That's not really cool. Can we back it in, everybody? Not really, no. Non-switchable ABS. No open parking spaces to do our U-turn challenge, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to line up on the line here, and then we're gonna go full lock to the left. Feet up, bap, 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 two and a half. Yeah, something like that. Um, I don't find the um, turning radius to be particularly good. Uh, I mean, it's fine. It's fine for what you want to do, I guess. But um, I found myself getting to full lock on occasion when I was a little surprised to do so, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Cooling fans on. No surprise there. I'll put it up on the center stand since that's one of the Lusso features. And then we'll... Uh... Hello. That guy's very nice and very tolerant of the daily riding. And we'll listen to this engine here a little bit. I mean, that doesn't just sound like any old motorcycle, does it? Now, 
It sounds wicked. As it should. All right. I forget to, what, what, did we forget to talk about anything? Maybe? I don't know. Um, let me check my phone and see if there's anything that, um, that I screwed up here. Um, but otherwise, we'll jump into some Instagram questions. There are some good ones this time around, in my opinion. All right. First one is from Sammy Mango Boy, who asks, worth getting over the BMW S1000XR or F900XR? <sighs> yeah. Hmm. F900XR, for those of you who don't know, is a parallel twin BMW, sort of cheaper, it's about 10 grand, 11 grand, maybe $11,000, something like that. Um, it is much simpler, much, uh, yeah, less complicated. <laughs> um, is this bike worth getting over that? I don't know. Those are just almost like two different things, really. But I think the more interesting question is the S1000XR, which is such an amazing bike. It really is so fast and so competent and so adjustable and, and pretty comfortable, and it's just a it's a it's an impressive impressive machine uh and i don't know if i can say that this really doesn't i mean it's italian in a way that the bmw is not it's a, a single-sided swing arm in a way that the bmw is not um but would i get it instead i don't think so i don't think so sorry Next question is from Otto Gets Blotto, who asks, how likely is this touring motorcycle to change the reliability perception surrounding MV Agusta? So yeah, a lot of people brought up the fact that they don't think MV Agustas are reliable, and I haven't had personal experience with having major failures on an MV Agusta, really. But I do understand that people had bad experiences with, with, uh, with parts availability and, and, and ownership experience, and so I just wanted to address it and say that, yeah, I... I mean, when this bike came out, MV Gusta did this sort of um, PR stunt where an Italian journalist rode it through whatever it was, 17 countries in 24 hours and 1,500 miles or something like that. And the idea was like, oh, look how far it can go and everything was fine. And maybe that's, maybe it's just a PR stunt, but I think that it indicates at least that MV Gusta understands that the person that buys this bike wants to see some kind of capability and reassurance in that uh, arena. So I hope that that the they're taking steps to make sure that that's the case. My tests are short though, to be honest. Um, so I don't have, uh, I don't have a lot of lot more information for you there, but like I said, I hope that they're taking steps to, to do the right thing. Next question is from Matty Bo 984, uh, who asks, what kind of baked good would you compare it to? Ah, uh, the analogy questions. These are my favorite. Thank you everybody for submitting. There was another great one about, a, about Batman's utility belt. And I, I, I'm not using it this time, but I just want you to know that it was awesome and I loved it and keep them coming. What kind of baked good? Well, you know, the really stereotypical thing to say would be, ah, it's a cannoli, right? Because it's Italian. So if it's a cannoli, it is the cannoli of all cannolis. It's the one that has uh, white chocolate truffle filling and shavings of, of rare Cambodian meerkat teeth on top and a gold leaf and sprinkled on and shavings of cow cow powder and it's presented on a plank of wood taken from a deck chair from the Titanic. You get my point? It's the most exotic cannoli that there is in some ways. And uh, I think that the downside to that is that the most expensive cannoli isn't always the one that gets purchased, which means it can sit on the shelf here and there. And I think that's something that MV Gusta has struggled a little bit in the past is sort of keeping up with the trends of motorcycling. It might be, there's undeniable innovation within MV Gusta, and there are very smart people involved with building these bikes. But the fact that they don't sell as many bikes or they can't churn quite as, as quickly as other companies, you, you see, you know, a smaller dash on a $22,000 bike with a five and a half inch TFT dash is arguably disappointing in 2022, as silly as that might sound. But this is the price strata that you're that you're working in, right? Um, and uh, and no electronic preload in the shock. I don't know. These are these are things that that uh, sometimes might happen to a cannoli if it sits on the shelf a little longer than the others. But if it's what you're after, if you want the cannoli of all cannolis, I think I think this is it. And I very much hope that that answer helps you in some way. Last question today is from Casimir Jenkins, who asked two questions um, that I love in combination. First question. Can the panniers hold a full face helmet? Second question, how does the bike make you feel while riding? I love these two questions because to me, this is the epitome of the MV Agusta Turismo Veloce, Lusso specifically. Can the panniers hold a full face helmet? Yes, they can. We talked about that in my experience. I was able to get my full face helmets, a couple of them anyway, in there. And uh, that's 
great for the bike. And how does it make you feel while you're riding? That is such an MV Agusta question, right? That's the thing that MV Agusta is trying to tap into over and over again, and often does with the, the, the sexy sound that it makes, the beautiful exhaust, the single-sided swing arm, the... Um, I don't know, the, the, the style, you know, there's no blinkers on the fairing. It's very clean. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a lovely motorcycle to look at it, and it provides an experience that not, other, not a lot of other bikes can. And I think it's so interesting that Kazimir Jenkins here asked both of those questions. In fact, there's another one I saved. Let's put this one on screen, too. Uh, Kaiden Flo asked, does any of the practicality take away from the Italian exoticness? And yeah, that's the, that's the question, right? That's what's so tricky about this and so interesting is that there are two things that are kind of at odds with each other. Um, and, and this bike is providing, you know, they've, they've provided practicality, which is great. Um, and they've provided this sort of, uh, tried to provide the same kind of emotion and flair that the bikes have always had. Uh, but in some ways it's, it's oil and vinegar and they don't necessarily mix. Then again, if you can get them to mix and you put them on your salad or on your cannoli then it's uh, whatever i'm losing my analogies you get it you get it it's a it's a tricky combination of things and i find it fascinating that mv gusta went down this road and in general i think i can call it a success it's an interesting dynamic fun bike to ride does it make me feel enough to really make it quote unquote worth it well you'll have to stay tuned for when i put this on the daily rider leaderboard right now all right, everybody, here we are inside Revzilla West, and we are at the Daily Rider Leader Board. Um, I don't have a little, a little logo for MV Agusta. I dropped the ball. Uh, my, my, my buddy Danny, who builds these things for us, is going to be disappointed that I didn't get in touch. That's on me. <clears throat> I put a little Revzilla logo there just as sort of a placeholder. But anyway, MV Agusta. Turismo Veloce Luso. Um, for the 2022 board, it's going to be a fairly simple discussion. It is not as good a daily rider as a Triumph Tiger Sport 660, just because the Triumph is simple and, and smooth and predictable and just also quite cheap compared to the, to the MV. And that all goes toward me being more likely to recommend it, frankly. Sitting next to each other in the garage, I'd be tempted often by the MV, but, um, but if I had to choose one for a month or a year, I would, uh, or more, I'd go with a Triumph Tiger Sport 660. So there's where the bike falls on the leaderboard below the Pan America, um, which is similarly expensive, which is why the Turismo Veloce gets a little, um, a little uh, price icon there, because, you know, the bike we rode with saddlebags, 22 grand, nothing to sneeze at. Perhaps an interesting thing to talk about is the 2021 leaderboard um, and specifically the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT because that's a bike that is pretty comparable in my mind to uh, the Turismo Veloce. It's, um, it's a three-cylinder engine for one, <laughs> a similar amount of horsepower, similar features. You know, you're talking TFT dashes, you're talking lots of adjustability, you're talking heated grips, center stand, saddlebags, that kind of thing. And I think the MV would fall below uh, the Tracer 9 um, you know, Yamaha T7, that's kind of a different bike. <laughs> uh, I would, the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT, I would give the nod over the MV Agusta Tracer Veloce for sure. If just getting to work is what you want to do and you want it to have a little bit of spunk and fire, there are other bikes at approximately half or a little bit more of the price. So, um, but yeah, in general, not a bad uh, spot for the, for the MV to fall on the leaderboard, I don't think. Um, certainly more, more practical and, uh, and not as fast, but, but similarly crackly to uh, S1000RR, I think. So yeah, there you have it. MV Augusta Turismo Veloce Luso is on the Daily Rider leaderboard. I am almost out of voice and out of breath. Thank you, as usual, for hanging out on this daily ride. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you learned something. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you next time. See you, everybody. Is that a boat? It is a boat. What the what kind of boat is that? Liquid natural gas powered. Wow. Don't know if I've ever seen a boat quite like that. 